Now, for any of you who have ever played Injustice 2, there is a clip that I very much like because I think it rings true in a lot of situations, and I'm going to play that clip for you right now. I've learned one truth, that every villain is the hero of his own story. Now, this is a quote I like to keep in my head for several reasons, and the reason why is because it helps me understand, even if I dislike somebody, and even if I disagree with some of their points, they still believe they're doing the right thing, and I think that's an important thing to keep in mind in most situations. But then we get situations like what I'm going to talk to you about today, where somebody probably thinks they're doing the right thing, they probably think they're the good guy, but for the life of me, you have no fucking idea how they can actually fucking make that distinction in their head, how they've, how they've become so mentally fucking degraded, so fucking warped, that they can actually try to make that argument in any fucking sense with a straight face. And if you've been following my Twitter, you know exactly who I'm talking to you about today. I'm talking about the hosts of Zooier Than Now. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Zooier Than Now, they are a podcast show on YouTube, as well as some strange backwoods website that they've created for themselves, that talks to zoo files about zoophilia. And as you've probably guessed already, the hosts are a little bit, uh, touched with the tism. They're not quite of this world. They exist somewhere in some astral plane of autism where, you know, the laws of, like, reality and nature just don't apply the same way that they apply here on Earth. So let's not mince words. Let's start talking about them, shall we? <laughs> So, Fosty seems to have a very, very rich history, which I will be linking in the description, his Kiwi Farms thread. Uh, trust me, it's definitely worth a read. That is a wild ride. For those of you without the time or the inclination, I'll just give you the uh, spark notes of that one real quick. Doug Fosty Spink is a failed businessman who lost his company after trying to sue some of his own employees and never paid out the debt that uh, he owed them from that lawsuit, based on what I'm able to gather. And he's also a failed drug smuggler, a coke addict, and animal rapist. Some of the greatest hits of his history include being arrested for trying to smuggle $34 million worth of cocaine across the border, being left by his wife and his fiance because he could not stop fucking his dog, as well as his mother th considering him a, quote, terrible waste of potential. For more wonderful tunes such as these, I would definitely recommend that Kiwi Farms thread. But now let's talk a little bit about my personal interaction with this man. I'm sure many of you who follow my Twitter are familiar with that brief seven-day stint where I was locked on Twitter and not able to tweet. If you're not, please refer to the Coyote Lively Twitter for everything that happened during those seven days. Near the start of that, I was introduced to Fosty when he tagged me in a post that he had made. Now, much like Fosty himself, this post would be very unremarkable, if not for the fact that it shows two very clear things. One, he makes a direct statement that he is not intimidated. That's going to be important as we continue. Two, he tagged me himself, right there, at Coyote Lovely YT. Of course, I don't think he suspected that I was still able to tweet on my alt, because I actually added him with these screenshots that you see on the screen. Now, naturally, as somebody who was not intimidated, he decided to stand up and have a conversation with me. Oh wait, that's exactly what didn't happen, because he immediately blocked me out of actual fear. And then he went one step further and decided to spurg out at me and re all over his gay little podcast for about an hour. But more on that later. Now, it had been pretty radio silent aside from that until very recently when he decided to come on my video that I had made about Ethical Z, and he had a couple choice things to say, which I'll be showing you on the screen now. Now, most of this is fairly unremarkable, except for one particular thing, where he claims not to know anything about my Twitter accounts despite directly adding them. So, we can establish now he doesn't have the greatest track record for honesty here, if the Kiwi Farms thread was not yet enough. Another thing worth noting is that he goes immediately radio silent the second he finds out that I'm actually tweeting out screenshots of all of those things, which you can see the screenshots that I tweeted out right here on the screen. Now, in most cases, I'd say somebody was intentionally playing stupid. I don't think Doug's playing anything. I think he really is fucking stupid. Doug, I want to make this very clear for you, okay? You can either be unintimidated and willing to engage with somebody, or you can block somebody and have everybody understand that you're already fucking intimidated very clearly. Like, there's, there's, you don't have these things existing in the same reality where I'm unintimidated, but I'm also blocking this person. These don't coexist, you fucking idiot. Not only that, when you actually try to say that you don't know anything about something you directly mentioned earlier, you kind of look like a fucking moron. Of course, I'm not sure what the fuck I expected. You literally left a real-life human being so that you could fuck your dog, so... 
Now we're going to talk a little bit about Toggle. Toggle is your very average sewage slurping rodent. Now the reason I say that is because he has the audacity to tweet out things like this. All right, zoos, let's powwow. When someone says zoo sadism, understand that it's a euphemism for animal torture. It's not BDSM, not some consensual bondage and some roughing around. It's cutting open puppies and fucking their wounds. It's killing animals for pleasure. And as you can see in this following tweet, he starts it off with, an animal torture is a sick fuck. Now, see, this is the issue that I have with Toggle. He's incredibly hypocritical when it suits him, because, as you can see here, he tries to make this holier-than-thou claim, but the problem with this is that he shares a platform with an actual animal rapist. Now, as much as I'm sure he would try to contest that, the issue is, rape is a legal charge, and as animals cannot legally consent, it doesn't matter how you try to rationalize it. The fact that Doug has fucked an animal is rape by law, which means yes, Toggle, yes, you share a platform with an animal rapist. And even if you would attempt to contest this in Doug's case, it does not change the fact that you have also continued to signal boost an animal rapist. I am speaking of Wolf. All right, so up next, we definitely want to welcome our guest for this evening, uh, Wolf. Hello. Uh, Fuckers watching this sick shit. This is sickening. I'm going to show you a quick clip. This was a debate between Wolf and Lucid Creator that Lucid had permitted me to co-host on his YouTube channel. Um, I might as well ask while uh, while we're on it, since I'm still in the introduction phase of the uh, little questionnaire I have for myself here. Do you classify yourself as a zoophile based on the definition you gave? And if so, have you performed any in the uh, zoophilic acts in the past? Um, I actually have done a couple in the past and a, a long time ago, and I do consider uh, myself a uh, zoo exclusive by definition of what I just stated. All right. Um, now, I'm just going to okay, go I'm ahead. I'm going to just jump in right here. Yeah. You probably should not admit something like that. <laughs> like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Like, even if it's true, you probably just shouldn't shouldn't say that well, on a podcast. As you can clearly see, Wolf himself admits to having done sexual acts with an animal. But before we finish this particular commentary, I'd like to point at one final thing on their podcast when they spoke of me. Now this clip I found particularly interesting because they make a very bold claim that none of their analytics seem to back up. Let's roll it. So to that little coyote bigot, whatever, something, something, I don't know, some coyote candy, lovely. some little candy ass green name that is totally appropriate for a nobody. Um, you're, you are welcome to come on to our podcast and talk to 25,000 zoos. Are you sure about that? Now that is quite a claim, is it not? Speaking to 25,000 zoo files. I mean, uh, wow, that's that's a big audience. Let's see if the numbers are backing that. Well, let's see. 332 followers on Twitter for the Zooier Than Now page. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a far cry from 25,000, but maybe it'll add up. Well, Toggle's not faring much better, assuming there's no overlap. Just about 200. I mean, we're going to need to really pull out some stops if we're going to really make it to that 25,000 benchmark that you boasted. Well, I guess we can chalk up another 700 on uh, on Doug's end. Not a bad number, but certainly not even close to 25,000. Well, maybe if we add in their YouTube channel, it'll actually get us there. Oh, would you look at that. They've privated their subscriber count. It looks like I really can't get any accurate uh, figures off of this. Darn. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is that over there? Let's uh, let's just zoom in on that real quick. Can we, can we get a zoom in going over there? Is that a discussion tab? Oh, well, I guess we can establish that this is below 1,000 subscribers. After all, even if you private your subscriber count, your discussion tab will turn into a community tab upon hitting 1,000 subscribers. So we know that this is below 1,000. I mean, Doug, uh, I don't know what you were thinking there, but you sound a little bit fucking silly trying to say that I'm some nobody and then trying to say that you're in the up. Uh, big leagues when none of your numbers are reflective of the boast you're actually trying to make here. I mean, this was one of the most needless lies I've ever seen in my life. Doesn't really say good things about your credibility if you'll lie so flippantly about something that really doesn't even matter. 
the fact that you felt like you had to make some asinine claim to try to lure me on there. Well, it really doesn't say very good things about how honest you're willing to be, now does it? Well, I think that's just going to have to do it for this one. I mean, honestly, these guys seem like they've really screwed the pooch on this one, uh, so to speak. We're being metaphorical here, not literal this time, although I'm sure they'd literally love to do that. The links to the artists who do my character stills will be in the description and the pinned comment, as well as my own social media, and I will catch you guys later.